Hello students, in this module we will discuss about computer problem solving or programming methodologies to be more precise. A computer program is a set of explicit and unambiguous instructions expressed in a programming language for instance Python. This set of instructions is called a program. A computer program can also be viewed as an algorithm expressed in a programming language. As we already know, an algorithm is a solution to a problem independent of any programming language. To obtain solutions to problems using computer, the first step is to write a program in a programming language of our choice. This step is called codifying the algorithm. The second step is to supply the program so developed with data, that is, input. The program takes the input and manipulates it according to its instructions and eventually comes out with an output which actually represents the solution to the problem at hand. In this session, our goal is to examine the process of algorithm design with particular emphasis on problem solving aspect of any task. In our daily activities, we employ algorithms to solve tasks. For example, we want to find the telephone number of a person, say Mr. Raja. In those days, when no mobile phones and contact lists were available, one had to resort to a telephone directory. A telephone directory is a book with a list of name, telephone number pair, arranged in alphabetical order on name. We literally have no problem in locating Mr. Raja's number as the list of names is sorted. Tasks such as this are performed automatically without any thought to the complex underlying process of searching. Just imagine searching for a name in a directory of million unsorted names. Would it be horrible? Let us turn the problem the other way. Look for the name of a person whose telephone number is say 424 triple to one using the telephone directory. Now the directory will be of no help to us since it is organized on the order of name and not on number. Do you understand the problem? Now imagine you cast a magic spell and the directory reorganizes in ascending order of telephone numbers. Now your task becomes very trivial. What do you understand from our discussion? Our discussion elicits the importance of data organization on the performance of our algorithm or program. We can expect good performance from an algorithm only when the data is symbiotically organized for the algorithm to use it effectively. Now let us dwell briefly in the problem solving aspect before we embark on the programming methodology. Even though it is widely accepted that problem solving is a creative process. Steps have been taken to formalize the, the process and make it mechanized and systematic. However, such attempts are in no way the recipe of problem solving or universal method. Have a look at the list of steps. They are problem definition phase comes first, followed by getting started on the problem, the use of specific examples, finding similarities among problems, working backwards from the solution, following the general problem solving strategy. Let us see each one in detail. First comes the problem definition phase. Success in solving any problem is possible if we make sincere efforts to understand the problem at hand. This is important because most of the time the problem statement is ambiguous and imprecise. By virtue of understanding the problem, we can arrive at a set of precisely defined tasks. In this phase, we should focus on what is to be done rather than how should it be done. Often, inexperienced problem solvers directly jump into solving the problem without much understanding and eventually find what they have 
solved is actually not required. Next, we step into getting started on the problem. A problem can be approached in several ways and also many solutions exist for most problems. Under such circumstances, it is essential on the part of the problem solver to identify the correct lines of attack for achieving the goal without fruitless distractions. Sometimes, novice programmer do not have the idea on where to start on the problem. This is mainly due to the fact that many of us get entangled with too many details of the problem. The best way out is not to be concerned with the details in the beginning. Details can be deferred to a state till the big picture of the problem emerges. It is painfully true that the sooner you start writing the code, the longer it will take to complete. Once we have comprehended the problem of our, to our satisfaction, we may use specific examples to kick start our journey. This is a popular rule of thumb or heuristic. Instead of pondering over the abstract problem in a general context, we may pick a specific example of the problem, try to work out ways and means to solve it. If the approach works, we can try to generalize the solution to a more general context. Doing so will give us confidence. Another strategy would be to look for similarities between the current problem and the problems we have already solved in the past. Such past experiences and solution may help us solve the current problem in hand. However, we must use this strategy with caution as it may avoid us from thinking out of the box. Another useful strategy would be working backwards from the solution. In some cases, we may assume that we already have the solution to the problem. Then we start to work backwards to the starting condition. Sometimes the solution we start with may be a guess which can help us getting a foothold to start the problem. Generally, whenever we solve a problem, we work in an exploratory search fashion to find a viable solution. Once a solution is obtained, we may want to systematize our investigations and avoid duplication of work. In such cases, this strategy works very well. Leveraging the general problem strategy. Over the years, computer scientists have devised several general and computational strategies that have been successfully used in many problems. Let me brief on some of them. One of the most popular and effective strategy is divide and conquer. In this strategy, the basic idea is to divide the original problem into two or more sub-problems which can hopefully be solved more efficiently by the same technique. The process of splitting, if required, may be repeated several times until the sub-problems become manageable. This strategy has been successfully applied in problems of sorting, searching and selection. Another general problem solving strategy is dynamic programming. This method relies on the idea that a good solution to a large problem can sometimes be built from good condition to smaller sub-problem. There are several variations to dynamic programming, namely the greedy search, branch and bound, and backtracking. Now let us discuss about the top-down and bottom-up design approaches. So far, we have been discussing on the design of algorithms to solve problems which are broad aspects of problem solving. Now let us turn our focus on those aspects of problem solving which are closer to the algorithm implementation. Once a problem is defined and we have a vague idea of how to solve it, we can begin designing algorithms using powerful techniques. The key to develop successful algorithm lies in the ability to manage the inherent 
complexity of most problem people as problem solvers can only focus on or concentrate their efforts on very limited span of logic or code there is an algorithm design technique that tries to accommodate this human limitation is called the top down approach it is also known as stepwise refinement approach one can apply the top down design approach to translate a solution to a problem from a vague outline to a precisely defined algorithm or program implementation the advantage of top down design is that it allows us to build solutions in a stepwise refinement fashion wherein the complex details of implementation are addressed only at the stage when sufficient groundwork on the overall structure and relationship between different parts of the problem are done have a careful look at the figure which shows a systematic breakdown of a problem here the problem at hand is to draw a complex figure the complex figure can be broken down to its constituent parts of simple geometric shape then each constituent shape can further be decomposed in simple structure like for example a triangle can be decomposed into three intersecting line segment top down design suggests that we take the general statements that we have about the solution one at a time and break them into a set of more precisely defined statements that we call a subtask these subtasks should be more accurately described how the goal is to be reached ultimately and with each splitting of the task into subtasks it is essential that the way in which the subtasks need to be need to interact with each other should be clearly defined otherwise it would not be possible to maintain intact the overall structure of the solution to the problem the subtasks so obtained by the splitting process result in a set of implementable modules that fit quite naturally and seamlessly into block structured languages like c pascal or algol making the implementation of solution quite simple apart from splitting of solution into subtasks the other two steps of top down design are equally important we will see them one by one choice of suitable data structure we discussed about the problem of searching a telephone directory we found that if the directory was unsorted it would be of very little help to us in other words the way the data is organized has a profound effect on the performance of the solution if the data is inappropriately organized the resulting solution will be clumsy sloppy and inefficient on the other hand if the data is well organized the solution will be simple transparent and e efficient next comes the effective construction of loops in any programming language paradigm there are structures that are conditionally executed and iterated also known as loops these structures along with input output statement computable expressions and assignments make up the heart of the structured program to construct loops we take care of we, we must take care of three things namely the initial condition before the loop is executed the invariant relation that must apply after each iteration of the loop and the conditions under which the loop should terminate with this we come to the end of the top down approach now next we take up the bottom up design approach a bottom up approach is building more complex systems from simpler systems 
that is piecing together of simple systems to give rise to more complex systems, thus making the original system the subsystem of the emergent system. Bottom up processing is a type of information processing based on incoming data from the environment to form a perception. From a cognitive psychology perspective, information enters the eyes in one direction, the sensory input or the bottom, that is the details, and is then turned on into an image by the brain that can be interpreted and recognized as a perception or recognition. This recognition is the output that is built up from processing to the final cognition. In a bottom-up approach, the individual base elements of the system are first specified in great detail. These elements are then linked together to form larger subsystems which then in turn are linked sometimes in, in many levels until a complete top level system is formed. Have a look at this figure. What do you see? Yes, you are right. A toy set of building blocks. The individual pieces of a building block are in fact simple blocks of precise shape and size. Many of these blocks when pieced or tiled together create wonderful structure as shown in the figure. To sum up, let us conclude this session with a very lucid example. Let us take a natural number 1540. This number could be factorized as follows. 1540 is equal to 2 into 770. Then 770 is factorized and we get 2 into 2 into 385. 385 is factorized, we get 2 into 2 into 5 into 77. 77 is factorized as 7 into 11. So, the final prime factors are 2 into 2 into 5 into 7 into 11. This is analogous to the top down approach, wherein we break the complex structure into sub elements. The other way is starting from the that is starting from the building block, that is the prime numbers say 2 into 2 into 5 into 7 into 11. So, we first perform 7 into 11 that gives us 77. So, we get 2 into 2 into 5 into 77. Then 5 into 77 gives us 385. So, we get 2 into 2 into 385. Then 2 into 385 gives 770. So, we get 2 into 770. Then 2 into 770 is equal to 1540. That is we get the number 1540. This is analogous to the bottom up approach wherein we start from the prime factors and we come to the composite number. Okay, now let us summarize what we have discussed in this session. The first point what we have discussed is about the steps that are involved in programming approaches, and we have seen there are two approaches the top down approach and the bottom up approach. In the top down approach that we have seen there are some six steps that we have to follow to in the paradigm of top down approach. The first is the problem definition phase. In the problem definition phase when we are given with a problem we should try to precisely define the problem and understand the problem to the maximum extent. Without understanding the problem and trying to solve the problem will lead to disastrous results. There is a saying that in this problem definition phase, we should try to concentrate on what is to be done rather than how it, how it is to be done. Some inexperienced problem solvers try to jump into solving the problem. That is not the correct way. So, in the problem definition phase, we have to concentrate on defining the problem precisely. For example, let us take the problem of finding the square root. For example, you give an input a number say 9 and what you get output is 3. The square root of 9 is 3. So, first when you are defined, when we are given a problem like this, we say we use, it, use a single word the square root, the operation, mathematical operation of square root. 
But actually, what is square root? In this problem definition space, we should formally write down the uh, problem definition as say, find a number m when multiplied by itself, say m into m gives us m square. Okay. So, we are going to give an input m square and we are going to find the number m. So, pre precisely define the problem. Second, getting started with the problem. Here, most of the problem solvers find a problem. Say they do not know where to start. We know the problem at hand. We have the definition. We have clearly defined the problem and also we understood the problem. But where to exactly start the problem? That is a great issue with most of the problem solvers. So, here a problem may have many lines of attack. That is, there are several ways in which a problem can be approached. And generally, every problem has more than one solution. So, here the crux of the problem is to identify a line of attack which gives us the solution fast and without much computational load. If we take a path to a solution which is say um, more computationally uh, load, loaded or sometimes may get, give you a solution which is fruitless. So, spending time on uh, lines of attack where, where the solution is not reached wastes the time. The third is the use of specific examples. Generally, uh, say for example, if you are uh, working with a problem and you say sorting a set of numbers, then uh, just like that pondering over the general context of sorting, what is sorting and other things. Let us take a set of numbers, say take a set of 10 numbers and try to, uh, try to devise a method to sort this set of 10 numbers. Once you have done that to on a specific set of examples, the same method can be generalized to other examples. So, that is the third one, the use of specific examples. Finding similarities among problems. So, this is actually another important step because as problem solvers, we have solved many problems in the past. So, the current problem at hand may be one of such classes, class of problems which have already done in the past. So, here we have to look for the, uh, look for comparing the current problem with the problems that we have already solved to find any similarity of the current problem with the problems we have already solved so that we can use the same methods what we have already done for the past in our past experience and apply the same method to the new problem and that may work out. So, that is finding similarities among the problem. In some cases, we may have to guess a solution first. Once we have made a guess, maybe a, a calculated guess, then taking the guess as a solution, we try to work backward and try to reach the initial condition. This is another strategy called working backward from the solution. This, this strategy is again useful. Sometimes when we are trying to solve a problem, we try to explore many, many different paths, spending a lot of time and finally arrive at a solution. Now, once we have arrived at a solution, we would like to go back to the initial condition such a way that we, we create a efficient method. So, here also from the solution, you try to work backward to the initial condition so that you try to identify a, a better solution to the problem. And the last one is the following the general problem solving strategy. Computer scientists have come up with a lot of algorithms or general problem solving strategies. Say, for example, the best among them is the divide and conquer, where a problem can be divided into sub problems and attacked. For example, take example of sorting a list of say 1000 numbers. The a list of 1000 numbers can be sorted as a whole or the list of 1000 numbers can be divided into 10 sets of each of 100 numbers and individually sorted and finally merge the, the results can be merged. So, this is actually a very, very effective strategy for most of the problems in computers 
especially for sorting, searching and, and selection problem. So, given a problem set, take the problem, divide the problem into sub problem until they are uh, manageable, solve each manageable sub problem, combine the result and get the original solution. There are other methods for general problem solving like the dynamic programming, the greedy method and the branch and bound method and the backtracking method. So, these problems, these are the, these are the proven methods that our computer scientists have already devised which can be applied to any problem, new problem. Hope you have enjoyed this session. Meet you soon in another session.